like you come here to praise the Lord today. Give him a hand praise. Woo-wee! <laughs> getting hot up in here, getting hot up in here. Praise God. Thank you. Yeah. That's all right. That's just all right. Let's give everybody a hand praise for today. Celebration of our 10th anniversary. Can you believe that? Thank you for all of the plaudits and accolades and honors that have been raised today for the glory of God and the edification of God's people as we gather in this sanctuary, on this day, in this house that the Lord has given us. Let's give God a hand praise. Let's give God a hand praise for all of those who have been responsible for leadership and membership and helping this ministry forward through many seasons and through many challenges. How about the choir today? And the band and Jay. Look out, Jay. Jay, you're getting gooder and gooder. <laughs> All right now. Yeah, let's give my hand praise now. Choir. Come on now. Choir. Come on. Come on, give yourself a hand praise. Woo! My man, Jay Reed. Good to see you again. Good to see all of y'all. All of y'all. John, look at you, man. That's all right. That's what I'm talking about. We make a joyful noise to the Lord. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We love the Lord, and we love to give God praise. That praise puts the devil on the run. Don't you know that? Ain't no sense in feeling blue. Just praise God and watch what he does. Coattails in the wind, as the old folks say. Praise God from all blessings flow. Thank you so much. I don't want to take too long today. I'm so glad to see my good friends, Bishop Gregory Ingram and Dr. Jessica Ingram. Um, and also, I think I see my, my leader, Kenny Glass, Captain Alpha Psi fraternity. I think I see Kenny Glass, my godfather, and a number of other people I can't see because of the lights are so bright. But I'm so glad to see uh, all of the folks who are gathered here on this day as we celebrate. And weren't the presentations beautiful today? Thank you, Lenny Tainter. Thank you, uh, True Heart. And, Griffin and all of the folks who have gathered on this occasion to celebrate our journey this far. I want to give thanks to all of the greeters and people who have helped to bring this ministry along and others in our faith community, our administrative team, and everybody's got a hand because everybody's got a gift. And if you use your gifts for the glory of God, God will bring the increase in everything that we do as a faith community. And the guest singers, God bless you all. This marvelous. Thank you so much. Good to see everybody. Is that you? Oh, my goodness. Good to see you, dear. God bless you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Well, let's get started in this five-minute sermon. In this five-minute sermon. Seminary teacher said, Carlisle, you got to figure out three rules of preaching. Stand up, speak up, shut up. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't preach by the calendar. Preach by the clock. Well, we're going to have a little bit of both today. Somebody needs to say, did the Holy Spirit tell you that? <laughs> or is that your thought, Carlisle Stewart? 
Praise God. Let's turn our attention to you, if you will, to uh, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Uh, the theme is titled, uh, A Call to Perseverance in Faith. And I want to read, uh, starting with verse 19, I know it's Hebrews 1 through 40, but I don't want to read all of the, uh, all of the text, but just read another pericope or segment of the text, A Call to Persevere. Uh, as we keep this journey going. I'm reading from the New International Version of John Maxwell Leadership Bible. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, that is, his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess for he who is promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. And anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much severely do you think some deserve to be punished? who have trampled the Son of God underfoot. Remember those early days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So, beloved, do not throw away your confidence. Do not throw away your confidence. Do not throw away your confidence for it will be richly rewarded. And so you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And by my righteousness, we will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. By faith alone in Christ, we've come. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to mount this rostrum one more time. To give homage and praise to you. The true source of our strength and our power. And though we may waver along the journey like plants in the wind, we know that our faith is anchored deep, deep-rooted faith that goes back generations. Deep-rooted faith that goes back for millennia. A deep-rooted faith that sprouts up through inclement territory and terrain, through the rocks and the thorns and all of the other things that we experience along the way. And so we thank you for that faith, the power of prayer and the power of persevering. No matter what the weather, no matter what the terrain, no matter what the opposition, no matter what the odds, Lord, you are there. And we give you thanks for you have brought us a mighty long way, kept us in the storm, renewed us when nobody else thought that we could be renewed. 
you have brought us individually and collectively as a faith community. And we say hallelujah today. We shout the holy shout. We run the holy run. We give you thanks today. Unapologetic, unequivocal thanks. Come Holy Spirit and have your way today. Be still and know that God is God. As we continue this journey hand in hand and in confidence, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just start out with a little bit of history, and again, I'm going to try to move through this, uh, these 57 pages that I got. Uh, you know that's not true. It's possible, though. The Pathfinders of Hope United Methodist Church organized a small group of Hope members to find or found a new faith community called the Empowerment Church after my early retirement from Hope in 2014. On July 6, 2014, the Pathfinders conducted their first worship service in this Shriners building. It was a glorious and triumphant service for an interdenominational church for all people, a church that had established its own covenant. The decision was made early on to incorporate and emulate the standards of United Methodism in terms of highly organizing. We organize so we don't have to agonize. We organize the structure, put together an infrastructure by meticulously giving attention to organizational development in those early years. Organizing and consolidating a church infrastructure where bylaws and the church constitution would serve as the organizing tenants in establishing IRS certification and the development and implementation of a church constitution, which be, be the primary foundation of church governance and development. A 501c3e, meaning ecclesiastical organization. Again, we developed bylaws in the beginning of the church's founding to establish legitimacy in applying for IRS compliance. Churches don't ordinarily have to apply for such status, but to qualify for contributions from other charitable organizations, the Empowerment Church Constitution became and was written as a 501c3e. E standing for ecclesiastical. Not just a regular 501c3 organization. 501c3e, meaning it is a church, a faith community. We are an organized structure. Elements of the 501c3 structure are included in our organization. But the 501c3e has a separate identity from all of the other 501c3. The Empowerment Church Constitution is the primary document in which we govern ourselves and make decisions on behalf of our faith community that will ensure integrity, viability, resiliency. The church constitution has been the seedbed and the bedrock of our church basically since 2014, 2017. Second point. Making sure that we establish checks and balances, principles, procedures, and protocols, ensuring the operational integrity, the stability, perpetuity, and longevity, and imperishability of the empowerment church. Did you get all the rhymes that I said? <laughs> integrity, stability, perpetuity, Longevity, imperishability. We set the church up to have church checks and balances so that everybody could collaborate and have a say. Not some kind of fly-by-night structure, but a structure that has integrity. 
Third, adopting and establishing seven basic areas of service and development known as the seven ships that would provide the guiding principles and cornerstones of church identity and engagement with members, non-members, friends, the larger community, our community, the country, and the world. Worship, discipleship, stewardship, fellowship, membership, leadership, admin relationships, and I add another ship that we have experienced along the way called hardship. A little bit of hardship. Can I get a witness? Y'all ain't laughing at that, but that's a serious part of this journey. But look at us. We're still here. We're still moving. We're still doing what we need to do as a faith community. Because if you cannot deal with adversity, if you cannot deal with resistance, if you cannot deal with the opposition, then what good are you? Because those are the faith testers. Those are the things that test faith and make us make statements at the end of the day about Negroes getting on our last nerves. You know what this situation is about. This is not an easy journey. You experience persecution, adversity, misunderstanding, all of those things. But you keep on. Because that's who you are and that's who we are. The founders and others of the Empowerment Church took primary responsibility, the pathfinders, for establishing a strong foundation for continuing the ministry and active engagement of leaders and members towards service and kingdom building, developing and caring for one another, also having a social presence and social consciousness and understanding that we are citizens of the world and that God has called us to take active participation in holding our political leaders and those outside of us responsible for the decisions that they make. And if they are not responsible, then we hold them accountable. That's part of our civic and social responsibility. You can't separate that from spiritual practice and what we do. Faith is not only about seeing and believing, it's also about action. What good is faith without action? Faith without works is dead. We have walked by faith all along this journey. And we are still walking by faith. Faith means standing where you are, looking out as far as you can see, walking to that horizon, keep walking with God to that horizon till you get to the end of that point, standing where you are, looking forward to see the next horizon and then moving on out. That's what faith means. But you're going to have trouble along the way. That's a normal part of any organizational, institutional development. And if you can't deal with adversity, what's the point? Nobody escapes adversity. Tell me a one of you are not, that are not experiencing some adversity right now. Some kind of trouble. I want to see the hands raised of folk in this sanctuary that ain't experienced no adversity or no trouble and ain't going through something right now. Mm. Mm. I think we got some consensus here. That's part of it. But you, if you can't weather it or wither from it, what's the point? That is what we call faith. That's how far we've come as a faith community. Why is it that we identify ourselves as a faith community, but no word gives us more trouble than having faith? Who among us has not fallen? Who among us is not imperfect? Who among us has not experienced tragedy or travesty or betrayal or heartbreak or heartache? Who among us here has not cried tears? 
But God understands. That's part of the developmental process. You got to go through hell to see heaven. You got to experience some pain to get to joy. Can I get a witness somewhere in this church? That's why Paul said, put on the full armor of God. For we don't wear, live in a world where we wage war as the world does, he says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish every argument that pretends or sets itself up uh, against the knowledge of God. And we take captive of every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Put on the full armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and in God's mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Take your stand. Standing firm, taking your stand where you are. For the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, when, not if. Everybody's going to have a day of evil that comes, that we can't reckon with, that we can't deal with, where we have thought that maybe it's all over for us. That day of reckoning of evil, what you got to do is stand firm in the spirit of God, in the confidence of God, in the joy of God, in the promise of God, in the determination of God. That's what you do. Not give in. Not give out. Keep standing firm with that armor on. And keeping that faith, each and every one of you in this sanctuary right now is going through a faith test. But maybe you have framed it as just some other than a faith test. Don't you know God, who Jesus, who came out of the wilderness, who was tested, is also the sponsor of certain types of tests that we got to go through? In life, you get the test and then the lesson. In school, you get the lesson and then the test. Everybody here is going through something. If you're getting older or whatever it is or whatever the situation it is, ain't nothing wrong with getting older. Excuse me, getting younger. What's wrong with that? You still here? Why are you all mixed up about? You're still looking good. You're still moving. You're still talking. You're still shopping. What's up with that? All twisted and turned up about wrinkles and other things and all of that. You're still here. God's got you here for a purpose. Same thing with the church. We went through two years of COVID and two years of an attempted hostile takeover of this church. That's four years of the 10. But we're still here. Somebody prayed. Somebody did something. You got to go through something to get to something. A certain group of people rose up. Decided they're going to be in charge. Ain't read nothing in the Constitution. You got the same parallel universe going on in society where they're trying to destroy the Constitution. I was telling y'all three or four years ago when you kept telling me quit preaching these prophetic sermons, what was going to happen? 
I told you, I preached the word. That's what God gave me. Y'all need to get ready for what's coming. And now, do what do we have? <laughs> Folks operating from immunity and, uh, and impunity, we still got to get ready for November. And let me say this. Nobody wishes harm to come on, folk. What happened to the former President Trump yesterday? Violence is not necessary. We still pray for our enemies. We still stand in the steed to do what we need to do. But we know the difference between a rat and a mouse. I'm not here to mince my words. We know the difference. That's why we get to ready because come November, we won't have a country. He's already told you what he's going to do. Abolish education. Continue the body rights attacks on women. This, that, and the other. That's part of your spiritual responsibility to deal with the leaders and hold them in check when they are using politics as a weapon to beat down the people. Oh, we don't want to hear that. You better want to hear it. That's half of your Bible is dealing with that. The Hebrew Bible, the prophets. That's part of our responsibility as part of a Judeo-Christian tradition. I want to know what's going on in my neighborhood. I want to know what's going on on my block. I want to know what's going on in my community. I want to know what's going on with my representatives. The church has been through its storms. And we're going to have an opportunity in the fall to experience some time with healing as we walk by faith. Want to have a healing time for the community in September as we gather together to celebrate Empowerment Church, God's grace, and our collective faith as a people. We want to spend some time reflecting on our journey, surviving the two years of COVID-19. Despite the uncertainty and fear, we adapted and we innovated. Online services, virtual fellowships, community outreach will become new avenues for connection as we've done in the past. Our unity was tested but we are forging forth amid all of the opposition, but mostly cooperation from members of this church as we have come through these storms. But let me say this to you. We all needed a breather, because this stuff ain't easy. You going through something, it's more than a notion when you fight in this fight, but you got to learn to fight it God's way. God will give you the master plan, standing firm in the word, standing firm in the spirit, walking by faith, putting on the full armor of God. That's the message. And practicing that, even in the midst of opposition and those who would try to bully you into submission. We don't bow to bullies. We don't, we are not susceptible, susceptible to folk who threaten us. We don't play that game. At some point, you got to stand up and say something and do something by faith, knowing that you are on God's side. No, this stuff about God being on our side, no, that's, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's okay. But we got to be on God's side first before God is on our side. Let's get that straight. Are we doing the things that God has called us to do as a faith community? Are we speaking truth? Are we living truth? I talked to a gentleman not too long ago that said he got caught up with his friends. Your friends will burn you down. You got friends ganging up and coalescing and talking about, well, we're, gonna, we, we're friends and we're going to stay friends even though your friends are leading you to hell. You can follow your friends all you want. If they're going to hell and you follow them, that's on you. 
But you got to know the word of God. You got to have a conscience. You got to have the spirit of God in you. To know what you need to do. And not back down from the devil. No matter what he's bringing. Or what day he's coming. Or what he's saying. The church is in trouble. When we started out years ago during the civil rights movement, we had what we called the prophetic black church that led the way of for social change and development and all of those good things. The prophetic black church with Dr. King and all of that group marching and serving the, the community to bring about positive change. Then all of a sudden the prophetic black church fades and the prosperity church emerges. The prosperity church is fine, but the prosperity church ain't dealing with social change. The hell that we are going through now is because we stop listening to the prophet, stop believing in God, stop doing what the word said do when evil emerged. Prosperity without charity is still disparity. Yeah, I said it. Ain't nothing wrong with prosperity. But prosperity, if you ain't helping somebody, you can ride up your elevator to the top floor. But if you ain't riding it down to help somebody else, you can be prosperous all you want, but you got to get down to the real nitty gritty. You got to fight the fight. You got to walk the walk. You got to talk the talk. You got to stand up. By faith. This ain't no mealy mouth ministries. Most of us have seen how evil has run rampant through our families, rampant through our lives. It is the problem of not standing up. And all of his minions are telling you to calm down. You don't need to be calming down when somebody got their foot on your neck. Get your dead gum foot off my neck. That's the age we're in. Part of the ministry of Empowerment Church is not only a church of healing and comfort, it has a prophetic responsibility for social change in the world. We walk by faith. And we keep walking. And we keep moving forward collectively. And guess what? We're going to have some disagreements. That, what, what's the big deal with a disagreement? It's a disagreement. That's all it is. Let's work it out. We don't want a community either where folk can't express their own minds. You don't need no yes culture where everybody's bowing and scraping and all that. You're supposed to have your mind. But whatever you're doing, you better be bringing the right information. As we do what we are called to do as a faith community to build in the midst of the opposition and the resistance and everything else. We have to be unified as we carry out this ministry in this day and age. This is no joke. You don't have disagreement in the choir, do you, John? Oh, I heard somebody shout. Well, you, you got disagreement in the choir? You just had one? You want to share it? Okay, what was it? See? See? No, what was that? What, what happened, man? See, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I saw what was happening, but I, I, I was fitting to say it, but What you going to say, man? Come on. Right, let me <laughs> Too late. 
Too late. Too late. You're too slow. <laughs> too late. <laughs> I catch you after service. Especially if you're calling names. Have you noticed that what we were going through, all of this trial and trouble, we weren't calling no individual names? We called out, we took the high road, baby. We're not calling no names. Somebody said, well, you, he's calling our names from a pulpit. That's a falsehood. Wasn't nobody calling nobody's names, organizations. John Kennedy said, forgive your enemies, but remember their names. Everybody on that journey to do what we need to do. So we're going to be moving forward, strengthening our community, deepening our spiritual roots, embracing innovation, building for the future, walking by faith. Change is a good thing. What is it would change sometimes? That's the only thing that's constant in life, but that's the hardest thing to do. What about trying to change yourself? Isn't that hard? Isn't that hard to change? That's just it. But we can. Christ is a change agent. Everybody here is changing right now. Some of you are concerned because the sermon is still on. <laughs> Why don't you have that concern when you're at the mall? I enjoy them all. I just can't deal with no long sermons, man. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean. And where's your sense of humor? Somebody said, why are you laughing all the time? I said, because I want to. <laughs> Do I supposed to be sad and all beat up and beat down? What's, what's with the sad stuff? Can't laugh, can't shout, can't crack a joke? What is that? Everybody all stiff-lipped, looking at you sideways when you jump out of your chair and shout. Or even looking at you sideways if you want to be quiet and be contemplative. Let me be done with this, because you know what? It's 10 minutes after 12, and I gots to go. I gots to go. I need help. Church needs help. Pastor needs help. Everybody needs help. Those of you who need help, raise your hand. What kind of help? Good help. Whatever that means, that's what we're about as we move forward. And I'm going to close it out now. We are on a mission. I don't care what I say from this pulpit. I cannot do this without you. You can do this without me. Pastors are replaceable. And I know one day I'm going to have to say goodbye. That's, that's just the reality of things. I can't stay here forever. I can't. We have to think about replacement. Somebody who will come and follow me, pick up the mantle, and take it further. Are you ready for that? Change is important. Change is possible. But we have to prepare not only for the future, but also for now. We got work to do. We got to replace a roof. $300,000 to replace a roof. The best product around. Somebody said something, well, I, I, I know where we could get a roof Replaced for sixty thousand. <laughs> I do too, but not here. You got fifty-two thousand square, three hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars to replace the roof, which will last twenty, twenty-five years with rebates and all these different kinds of things that we get to save money. So when it rains real hard. 
Ain't no rain coming into the fellowship hall and no place else in the building. We got work to do. We got to build this church. We bought it as is. Say to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, say, as is. As is. As is. $40,000 for this, $50,000 to get the lead out the water, this for uh, uh, another $25,000 here and the $30,000 there and, 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 and $50,000 here and there. And somebody's talking about, well, where's the money going? You can drink water, that's clean. Now we need a roof. Say roof. roof. Now say this, roof, roof. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Roof, 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 roof. We need some barking Christians. Roof, roof. That's what I'm talking about. Have some fun with this. We have great opportunities. Our own Reverend Ed Harlan, you remember not too long ago when you would chair Bog Ministries and we were renting from the Shriners and every time we wanted to use space, they would cha-ching with the cash register. And the Bog Ministries Board of Governors under your leadership decided that we were going to make a move across the parking lot to an administrative uh, building where we had our administrative offices over there and then we developed a youth power center there and then over time we bought, the, we, we rented the whole floor. We had to keep the ministry moving and we need money to do that. Oh, that was a real responsive response. <laughs> Money talks, you know that? It usually says goodbye. <laughs> we wanted to say hello. Time to work. Shalani, your mom is here. God bless her. You remember when you joined the Old Hope years ago? Jelani was part of the first Rites of Passage program. And one of the things she said, your mom said, she said, I'm joining this church because it's smaller. I want a small church where I can know the people. And then all of a sudden, the church blew up. See what you, you laid the foundation. <laughs> the church is still small now. But most of the people who are going to be here are not here yet. If we believe, okay, all right. Faith, always by faith that we walk this way. When I think about my journey and all that I've experienced, I'm thankful to God for the rough times for the good times, for all the things that he's allowed me to see and go through. But I know that I could not have done it without him. I know that every step that we take, it is with his favor, his endorsement, and by his power. And so as we propose as we pose and stand here for the next 10 years, 10 years, most churches don't meet and make it from three to five years early church starts. We're gonna keep moving by faith. I love you all. I thank you for everything that you've done to make this ministry possible. And uh, there's some things that we promise that we are still working on that we're going to get going here in this building, in this church. And I thank you for your prayers and all the ways in which you have demonstrated faith along the way as we've shared this journey together. So thank you. God loves you today. God keep you today. God bless you today. God heal you today. God give you everything that you need today. And to know unequivocally that he is with you no matter where you are and what you're going through. We accept it by faith. 
And we trust the Lord as we move forward. Because God is still a God that makes a way out of no way. And we're going to keep on keeping on as long as we have life and breath in us to keep building this ministry, giving God glory, and doing our part to make sure that things that are happening in the world, that the leaders in the world are accountable and responsible for what they're doing. We've got some difficult days ahead, these next four or five months, but we have to keep the faith and keep trusting God. Don't hit the panic button. I want to send a, 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 a memo to the Democrats. Don't be, don't be pushing the panic button now. What's wrong with y'all? You act like you're working for the other side. You don't hit the panic button by jumping out the window on the first floor. You ain't said nothing to about Trump. But you talking about the old man that's got more sense and has done more than any president in recent history for the people of this country. Now we need to wake up and smell the coffee and get with the plan and the donors talking about they, well, they're not going to don't, don't, don't keep your money. Because you, what you're worried about is the taxes that you're going to have to spend, which are going to be 25% taxes to make up for our deficits than the 8% that you're spending now. I know my politics. I know my history. I know God. We got to get ready and be ready to do it God's way. Because the information that he gives us leads to the transformation of who we are. We can't change ourselves, but with him we can change anything. The doors of the church are open.